<laughs> it's a great pleasure to address you today. Uh, I apologize for the coffee. I understand a lot of people were asking for the early coffee. Uh, tomorrow I'd ask for it earlier, but right after the keynote, we're going to get some coffee. Um, and I'll fix this problem for tomorrow. So apologies for that. Take care of So uh, you, you've traveled from, uh, from all four corners of the planet uh, to gather here. I'm sure that uh, some of you are still jet lagged. And uh, at this point in time, your families are either having supper or they're going off to bed. But uh, you're welcome in Montreal. Welcome to Concordia. It's a pleasure to greet you. As we begin the 22nd International Congress on Personal Conflict Psychology, I want to tell you that the theme of this year, reconnecting and celebrating diversity, uh, seems like the most logical title. It has been 35 years since this Congress in Canada. The last time it was in St. Catharines. Uh, since then, our country has changed, the world has changed. More than ever, we need to build tight networks. In spite of differences, we must celebrate diversities. In spite of differences, because this is what makes us human. I want to thank several people, uh, without whom this conference would not have been possible. First, I want to thank Nadia, who has been, who has been the driving force in pulling this conference together. Um, Despite her million responsibilities as a doctoral student, part-time professor, public scholar, and mother of three, she was a true project manager for the conference, so thank you, Nadia. I also want to thank my colleague, Juliana, without whom all of the look and feel of the conference would have been very different. And I also want to thank all the volunteers uh, as well. So there's also a lot of organizations that, are, that have given us their support, including the Constructive Psychology Network, the Marine Family Society, uh, the Australasian Personal and Construct Psychology, the, a group and the School of Psychology, uh, the University of Bologna, Tourism Montreal, Musée des Beaux-Arts, from whom you had free passes, the Media Institute that greeted us yesterday and gave us free space, the Center for Teaching and Learning, the Department of Education from Concordia and Concordia University itself. So to mark the opening of the conference, the conference I've asked Jason Campbell, who is the Associate Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Science, and Richard Schmidt, who is the ex Chair, or the exiting chair of the Department of Education, uh, who, who is now on sabbatical, but present here with us, to give us a lot of more. So, Jason. So welcome everyone on behalf of the Faculty of Arts and Science and Concordia University. Uh, it's a real pleasure to host you here in Montreal for the 22nd International Congress on Personal Construct Psychology. I understand this is after 35 years of absence from Canada, although the Congress has been that 22 years, so I'm trying to figure out that now, but you know, there were some gaps in between. So welcome back, Canada. Um, the theme, of course, as you know, is reconnecting and celebrating diversities. Uh, and in that spirit, we would like to begin the proceedings of this conference by acknowledging that Concordia University is located on unceded indigenous lands. The Kenyan Kehaka Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands and waters in which we gather today. Teotiake, Montreal, is historically known as a gathering place of many First Nations. And today it's home to a diverse population of indigenous and other peoples. We respect the continued connections with the past, present, and future in our ongoing relationships with indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. I'd personally like to congratulate uh, Nadia Nafi, uh, Julia, Juliana Cuccinelli, I'm not sure she's she's <laughs> <Manette, laughs> and of course, Anna Louise Davidson for their work in convening such an impressive program. So while I cannot predict the future, I feel, having read the program and looking at the individuals in this room, that it is a sound construal of the situation to expect a gathering of innovative thinking rich discussion, and hopefully also lots of fun. Um, with that expectation stated, I just want to wish you a great conference. I would also, uh, on behalf of the uh, University, like to welcome all of you uh, to this wonderful conference. Um, I was, uh, I actually was trying to figure out what the construct was between a former chair and an ex-chair. I'm not sure which construct is better, but I'm going to look for the polls and figure that out. 
Uh, one, one of the things that delights me about this conference is it's a manifestation of, of uh, in the Department of Education, in the Program of Educational Technology, uh, the brilliant young minds that we have uh, in, in the form of Anne Louise Davidson and uh, Juliana Cuccinelli. But we're very fortunate uh, to have people like that in our department showing leadership uh, in, in a, a respectful, in a scholarly, and a very, very important way. So I want to start out by uh, congratulating them on the wonderful work uh, that they're doing on behalf of uh, the department. I'd also like to welcome you to, uh, as, as Jason did, Montreal, uh, which is a city with, with extraordinary diversity in a country that uh, these days it appears to continue to be considered sane. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world, and uh, so it, it's, it's really a pleasure to live in a country that, uh, that enjoys the kind of diversity and free thinking that, uh, uh, that uh, is not necessarily manifest in many parts of the world. Um, when I was chatting with Jason uh, just a little bit earlier, I was reminded uh, that the roots of the educational, tech pro educational technology program here at Concordia lie in part in PCP. Um, two founders of the uh, program, uh, David Mitchell and Gary Boyd, worked with Mildred Shaw and Brian Gaines for many years. And so the connection between the repertory grid, PCP, and systems theory existed then and remains in many respects in our program. So I see this as a sort of homecoming uh, for, for the department and the program. On a broader theme, I learned uh, yesterday from Michael Maslow's excellent primer on personal construct theory that there's potential friction, if you will, or at least in my understanding, between indivi the individual corollary and combined commonality and social, uh, social Sociality? Sociality? Sociality. Correlates. <laughs> the individual versus the social. And his, his uh, talk prompted me to look at the relationship between the personal, in quotes, and the social, because it's a very, very interesting uh, set of, of, of issues, so that we're not talking as individuals just, but we're working within a context within, within a society. And so I looked at direct links with social constructivism and, and Kelly's work. And I think that there's much to be learned from PCP that can be applied not just at the personal level, but for society, especially one that holds diversity and equality as core values. As I just mentioned, we live in troubled times and we need to find paths to self-correct. In closing, I'm delighted that we are hosting this very important, timely conversation at Concordia. And I again would like to thank my colleagues for their hard work that they have done to make this event a great success. Thank you. Um, Dr. Kamat pronounced the territorial acknowledgement uh, earlier, and I want to say a few things about the personal meaning it has to me, because very often we say these things and it becomes part of the protocols, but we don't really reflect on what it actually means. Uh, so I was born in a, in a small town, an hour away from Montreal, Oxford is called, where a lot of kids had native blood. And some of the Mohawk people in my family were the kind of souls that one could encounter, with different belief systems, different values, different understanding of symbols different constructions of friendship. I have much to say about this, um, but I, 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 and I don't have enough time to say it, but I can tell you one thing is that if we are to engage in truth and in conservation, we have to revise our construction system. There's no choice about it. Uh, turning to PCP now, I can tell you that there's a personal love story between me and PCP. And we all like to tell each other what's this story, and you probably wonder how did this single Canadian in one side of the country ended up with PCP. So here's the story. When I was a doctoral student uh, in uh, at Ottawa U, uh, well, actually the University of Ottawa, I was working with Michel Bourassa, who was a neuropsychologist. And uh, she preferred the project of personal meaning than the medical model, which I thought was really interesting. So I was not sure what, uh, what I could work around with my doctoral thesis. And she said, why don't we meet and discuss? So, um, Many people worked on topics that were close to their hearts, and I had already done that for my MA, and I was not keen on, again, going through a personal crisis in my PhD. Um, and I, 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 I swore that I would never mix passion and frustration with intellect again, which I completely broke my, my promise many times, but anyway, at the time, it was a rational thing to do. 
So she met me and she asked me uh, to list projects, ideas, project ideas. And then she asked me to talk about them. Then she pulled three out and then she said, you know, is there one that is different than the others? Why is that? And that was the first time that I went to the recurring regret interview. 